Hi, this is Arush Joshi here and you are watching History Shorts. Do subscribe and press the bell icon to receive video notifications at the earliest. Today I will be speaking about the annexation of Hyderabad to the Indian Union also known as Operation Polo. Sardar Patel, the Iron Man of India, played a pivotal role in shaping up India when it was in its most vulnerable phase. Let's go slightly back in time to the late 17th century when the state of Hyderabad was ruled by the Asaf Jah dynasty. Asaf Jah from Turkey was appointed as the Nizamul Mulk or governor of the southern province. As the Mughal reign declined gradually with Bahadur Shah Zafar being the last emperor, Asaf Jah seized control and established himself as the Nizam. The Nizams ruled for over 200 plus years with Osman Ali Khan being the last one. Hyderabad was not only a prosperous state but was also the richest state and Osman Ali Khan was the richest man in the world. The state of Hyderabad consisted of parts of present-day Telangana, Karnataka and Maharashtra. When India emerged as an independent nation, there were 565 princely states and they were, they were given a choice by the last Governor General, Lord Mountbatten, to join either India or Pakistan. When everyone gave their choice of joining India, the last Nizam, Osman Ali Khan, was in favour of joining neither of the two newly formed unions. All the, all the other princely states signed the instrument of accession, voting in favour of joining India. The Nizam stayed quiet and chose to join neither of them and was in no favour of joining India. The Nizam sought to buy more time by getting into a standstill agreement for one year to maintain status quo. Sardar Patel did not want to take this the way. Hyderabad was right in the middle of India, surrounded by land on all sides with no sea route. Sardar Patel sent some foil play in the Nizam's intentions and set up an investigation team. It was found out that the Nizam wanted to strike a deal with Muhammad Ali Jinnah to use the Karachi port for trade and other activities while being hostile to India. It was also found out that the Nizam had granted a loan of 20 crores to Pakistan which they would use to fund their army. Sardar Patel managed to pull the Nizam away from Jinnah, thereby ensuring that Hyderabad could not become a part of Pakistan. Hyderabad continued to be in the standstill agreement, keeping alive the probability of Hyderabad carving itself out as an independent nation. Hyderabad had a group of militants or religious fundamentalists called the Razakars, whose sole objective was to establish Islamic supremacy and they had the backing of none other than the Nizam himself. The Razakars too have a history dating back to the 1920s when Osman Ali Khan advised a political party called Majlis-e Itihadul Muslimin whose sole objective was to establish Islamic supremacy. They had a paramilitary wing too to further the agenda of the party which included the training of thousands of volunteers including brainwashed children these militants were ultimately called the Razakars. As India's independence was imminent in the 1940s, a militant leader named Qasim Rizvi sought to fulfill the organization's agenda of establishing an Islamic state. He was inspired by Rahmat Ali's plans of calling it Osmanistan. By 1948, Qasim Rizvi had trained more than two lakh Razakars to strengthen and to threaten and thereby blackmail the government of India into agreeing to the demands of the Razakars to grant them an independent Islamic nation. The Razakars had a women's wing too, in which girls were trained guerrilla warfare and even trained to become experts with guns. Qasim Rizvi was ruthless and arrogant throughout his meeting with Patel, wanting nothing but an independent nation for Hyderabad. He would also order the Razakars to get rid of all the Hindus. Qasim Rizvi, in his public speeches, encouraged not just the Razakars but all people of his community to revolt and call for violence in several of his subsequent speeches. Looting, arson, murder, rape and destruction drastically increased in the, city of, in the state of Hyderabad. The communal violence instigated by the Razakars began tearing the state of Hyderabad. 
here is a detailed report about the atrocities committed by the Razakars in the Hyderabad State. Hyderabad was being converted to an Islamic State despite housing 85% Hindus. Patel did not want to wait any longer. The first week of September 1948 saw high level meetings between Patel and the Indian Army to find out a way to march the Indian troops into the Hyderabad state in, in, in the form of a police action. Nehru was not in favour of such an action and even wanted to delay the police action. Patel bypassed Nehru and gave a green signal to the Indian Army. The early hours of 13 September saw the police action codenamed Operation Polo in which Indian troops under the command of Major General Chaudhary marched into Hyderabad. The Indian Army was naturally better equipped with arms and ammunitions and the Razakars were mere guerrilla militants. Though the Hyderabad Army and the Razakars put up a brave fight, it was all over within 100 hours. On 17 September 1948, the Nizam went on air and officially announced ceasefire. On 18 September 1948, a formal surrender ceremony was held in which Major General L. Adros of the Hyderabad Army surrendered to, the, surrendered to Major General Chaudhary of the Indian Army. Nizam Osman Ali Khan assured that in spite of what had happened in the past, he would now be loyal to the Indian Union and would collaborate with the Government of India. Sardar Patel strategically prevented Hyderabad from becoming an independent Islamic nation like Pakistan right in the middle of the country. 32 of our Indian brave hearts were killed in the attack. Around 1300 of the Razakars died in the attack and 1900 of them were captured. According to the Sundarlal committee, a whooping 30,000 to 40,000 civilian lives were lost. In the aftermath of the police action, the Razakar group was banned. The court, upon finding Qasim Razvi guilty, sentenced him to life imprisonment. The court decided to reduce Razvi's sentence if he chose to go to Pakistan. Razvi came back to Hyderabad for the last time, for the last time from Pakistan to check the status of the Majlis e Ittehadul Muslimin. Qasim Razvi chose Abdul Wahid OSC to lead the MIM. Abdul Wahid OSC transformed the MIM into the present day All India Majlis e Ittehadul Muslimin to reflect the party's ambitions of growing into an All India party. Later, Abdul Oasi's son, Salauddin Oasi, joined hands with Indira Gandhi of the Indian National Congress. The party is now headed by Salauddin's sons, Akbaruddin and Asaduddin Oasi. It is unfortunate that we students learn nothing about these in our school textbooks. I remember when I was in the 8th grade, we had like this smaller paragraph about the annexation of Hyderabad. In, I think, uh, the chapter was titled India After Independence. Nor did we learn about the great deeds and the great acts of the Iron Man of India, who ensured the unification of India. In the end, I would like to conclude by saying, we the people of Hyderabad Karnataka or Kalyan Karnataka owe a lot to the great man, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, better known as the Iron Man of India. If not for this man, it is hard to imagine the circumstances we would have found ourselves in. Jai Hind and Vande Matram.